Hey guys, it's Sun for Games. Welcome back for more E3 covered 2017. This time with Sony's conference. Now, Sony has knocked it out of the park the past few years at E3. Every time they do a presentation, it seems to be amazing. So, could they keep it up this year? Depends on who you ask. Um, so, let's get right into how they presented, what they presented, and we'll talk about you know how it was overall. So, they open up with some like really cool music being played on stage. Followed by the super awesome like waterfall with lights. It, they really know how to throw a presentation. They know how to do the presentation. It was just really unique and interesting. It reminded me of like a, a Disney spectacle. But uh, just like awesome stuff. I thought it might be Assassin's Creed related at first because they, they kind of seemed like they were forming maybe an Assassin's Creed logo like in the water. Uh, wasn't. So lights were like changing colors. Anyways, it turns out it was for Uncharted Lost Odyssey, which looks awesome. It just, it's not an afterthought. I've been looking at it. Uh, shamefully, like it was going to be a little DLC pack, um, not very interesting, I wasn't that excited about it, I loved Uncharted 4, I just, you know, I, the little DLCs don't really get me going, but looking at how much they're focused in on the story with Chloe and the, that other girl's name, I can't remember her name, um, it looks, it looks pretty cool, uh, it looks like a lot of Uncharted fun, plus, you know, a story to keep me engaged, which is what I love about Uncharted, so I was excited to see that, uh, then they start like, kind of, raining down like some snow, some snow throughout the uh, whole auditorium, uh, and leading into Horizon Zero Dawn Frozen Wilds. Uh, kind of a surprise. I, at first I thought it was um, maybe a new IP or something we hadn't heard of, or uh, maybe God of War, but that don't come till later. So no, Frozen Wilds, uh, expansion, I, I don't think it's a standalone uh, DLC kind of thing for new stories for Horizon Zero Dawn. I haven't played the original yet, I really want to, I heard it was amazing, but um, not sure where it fits into the storyline, if it's during the, or after or before, I don't know. Uh, so exciting stuff there, it looked like really cool new environments, uh, very snowy version of Horizon Zero Dawn. So um, I, at this point I started to realize I was getting really excited, because Sony was showing the crowd a lot more, kind of panning over the crowd, they had they had uh, videographers throughout the, the actual crowd you know, stands themselves, the uh, auditorium kind of filming people, which I was excited about because uh, there's been a shift this year at E3 to kind of ignore the crowd, not, we don't get any of that audio, and you don't get any of the emotional reactions of, of the people that are live at these events. You, I love to hear the cheers when, like, you know, an amazing game is revealed, or right? we weren't getting any of that because everyone was like, quick, just play the video and mute mute the damn audience. Uh, so I was pumped. I was like, maybe we're going to see some really cool stuff. Like, they're they're panning over the audience. Uh, but I, I think it's just because they're very confident, and the games are showing to, to see some excited reactions. Um, I don't think it worked out for them quite as well. <laughs> A lot of times they'd pan over, and I was just kind of like, yeah, all right, cool, cool, nice. So uh, moving on, though. Uh, they uh, led into <laughs> Days Gone, which they revealed last year, last year's E3. And this year's you know, foray into it is way more interesting. So last year, they just kind of showed the, the lumber mill thing where he's fighting off floods, floods of zombies and just doing, using the environment to his advantage, uh, shooting with with his guns. Uh, it looked really cool, but I, I, I wasn't pulled in. I was like, all right, zombies, we've done zombies before. But this looks awesome. Uh, what they showed this time was very more story, story driven. They had uh, the characters interacting, showed a lot of the amazing uh, graphical fidelity they have in these faces the facial expressions it just looks really cool he gets on a motorcycle he's driving the motorcycle through the woods and uh it, then it kind of turned very very reminiscent of the last of us as he's kind of like going through this little encampment beating up a couple guys in the uh, the roads and you clearly have the the idea that if he wanted to he could approach you know the the camp the same way just kind of like go in guns blazing fist to, fist to cuffs but uh he kind of moves some traps around draws attention to the trap Guy runs over, uh, doesn't realize there's a trap there, and like gets stuck in a bear trap. So he's screaming. Whole camp runs over to see why he's screaming. And then as you're like kind of making your way, just making your way downtown, uh, getting out of there, just continuing on. It was all a distraction for you. You kind of like look down at the river and you see one of those hordes of zombies like attracted to the noise. So clearly that's indicating that like there are way more ways to approach um, every kind of situation that I thought. I thought it would be entirely against the zombies. Clearly not. Um, excited to see how that kind of interaction continues. And they showed off a little bit more of that in the next scene where there's a kind of like a raised platform and then a bunch of people kind of guarding it and everything. And, and he blows this whole dam with some C4, you know, by player choice, which, you know, again, flood of these zombies coming in. 
that take out everybody and drive them all off. And he kind of just like struts on through like nothing. It's like you don't have to approach it that way. So cool to see that kind of stuff. Uh, way more excited about it than I was previously. Still no word, I think, on when that's coming, but really pumped. Um, moving on. <laughs> Craziest reveal of E3 for me was this, this uh, you know, man with a huge sword in his back kind of going through this little jungly tunnel, uh, maybe a cave system, but it looks like it's almost just created by foliage. And, you know, you're looking at it and you're like, this looks like Monster Hunter, but it looks gorgeous. It looks brand new game, uh, Unreal Engine 4 kind of style. You're just looking at it you're like, this is a beautiful game. There's no way it's Monster Hunter. But it, it kind of like, he, the way he's jogging almost looks like Monster Hunter. He's got this huge sword that looks like Monster Hunter. But it can't be. That doesn't make any sense. And there's some weird other things. He's following like these glittering uh, things. He's doing some harvesting. I'm like, I don't know. That's kind of like Monster Hunter. But it still doesn't look like Monster Hunter. My first thought was, who is copying Monster Hunter? Like, thank you. Thank you for finally copying Monster Hunter. Um, so he ends up facing off. He's, he's kind of like hiding, sneaking around. He faces off against this giant T-Rex leaping attack from above to hit him in the face um and then like a bitch runs away for a while <laughs> to like the top of this tree structure where there's like a dragon bird fire breathing thing that like takes on the the t-rex and they're fighting each other so that i don't know if that was in his intent or not and then they reveal monster hunter world it totally is a monster it's a high fidelity hd brand new console based Monster Hunter. Found out later, also going to PC and Xbox One, but uh, super excited for a, you know, a console, a full console Monster Hunter, not a little 3DS version of Monster Hunter, because I've always loved the concept of the game, and I appreciate why it's uh, portable, uh, but I'm just excited to see some, like, high, amazing graphics Monster Hunter. I think that's, I want to have a full controller in my hand. I'm super pumped. Just, I was so blown away that it came out of nowhere. Um... But yeah, so then <laughs> I actually got a little bit too excited because they open up with Dante from uh, Devil May Cry. And he's, but then he's like fighting a robot with Doctor Strange and Captain America. And I was like, oh, this is, this is going to be Marvel versus Capcom. But I was like, Dante. Uh, so they showed off. It was all story. I didn't see any combat at all. Um, bunch of your favorite like Capcom and, and Marvel characters side by side. And then revealed that the uh, there's a Marvel versus Capcom Infinite which is the name of the, the game, a uh, story demo available for download now. Um, you can download it right now, I guess, which is crazy. <laughs> they they kind of close out real quick with Rocket Raccoon being like, it's like, Dante, I, can I borrow the babies? And he's <laughs> like tossed him the gun. He's like, Ebony Ivory. <laughs> Just kind of cute. I like seeing Rocket Raccoon interact with uh, Dante. I love Dante. I miss, I miss Dante. Um, so then so I, I kind of blacked out because I was so excited. I'm still talking about Monster Hunter, typing up Monster Hunter. They revealed a new trailer for Call of Duty releasing on November 3rd, which looked really cool. It was a really hype trailer. Uh, it was Call of Duty, but as I was watching it, I was like, it, it still does look, you know, fresh and unique enough that I might be willing to check it out, especially with, you know, Back to World War II. It, uh, some of it took place in Pearl Harbor, which it was just a very uh, cool trailer. The music, um, the flow of the action, just really sweet. I, I'm excited to see more gameplay as we get closer to release. So just like... Uh, the game playing it's it's very cinematic when they make it a very cinematic so uh excited super pumped uh, call of duty is always a cinematic game for the single player and there are the single players are usually pretty fun i mean goofy fun time so I'm, I'm excited we'll see uh what else then then we got into a super um vr section they just like jumped into psvr i was like yeah all right how many can they possibly have because i've had some Hesitation with PSVR due to technical limitations of the system. It's a smaller resolution than most VR headsets that are, you know, legitimately more expensive than the PSVR. Um, the tracking, I've heard, is, isn't quite as one-to-one. -one. It's a little slower and can make you feel a little weird sometimes. But mostly, the move controllers are the primary method of motion, and I'd, I've heard that they're just awful for this. Uh, anyways, but that that's just my opinion. I haven't actually used it, so that's all based on other people's reactions. So, for PSVR, they opened up with Skyrim VR, which regardless of <laughs> how much Skyrim we've seen at 2017 E3, which is absurd, uh, crazy that Skyrim VR announced at PlayStation. Like, I don't know how they locked that down. I don't know if it's unique to PSVR or not. 
uh, it looked a little janky, to be honest. I mean, it's an older game now that they're shoving VR into. So when the hands are moving around, like they showed him shooting some uh, fireball with both hands, it was kind of like... Probably because the PS Move controllers can't stay, <laughs> have a stable motion control. Uh, but super cool. I mean, if if you're really into VR and love Skyrim, I mean, this has got to be super thrilling to you. Um, neat. Uh, I don't really know much more about it. They just kind of showed off some VR stuff with picking up and moving and stuff around in game. And that stuff's all awesome. And I'm really excited to see more AAA VR titles coming out um, for any platform because I want to see VR succeed. I want to see more VR games come out. So that I have a reason to buy the VR headsets um, without it being just like a couple games that I'll play like once or twice. Moving on, they showed off a couple more games. A side scroller, very cool neon colors and stylization called Star Child. Uh, again, don't really know much about that story, gameplay, or otherwise. Uh, just kind of showed it off real quick. A really creepy VR game, The Inpatient. Very psychological, uh, terrifying, just a weird, creepy setting of like a... Looks like an insane asylum or something. Oof, man, it just, ugh, creepy. Then, <laughs> I would have thought this was an April Fool's joke if it wasn't in E3 in front of me. Final Fantasy XV Fishing. It has an official name, uh, I think, like, Monster Deep or something like that. They're hanging around in vamp the campfire, which actually looked pretty cool because it looks like VR and you're sitting at the campfire with, like, Noctis and Prompto and Gladio and... Oh my god, what's was uh, Ignis, Ignis. And he's just kind of looking around, and he's like, do you want some fish? Uh, and then there was some thing where you're like uh, trying to creep through this area to like get to a good fishing spot, like monsters were attacking you. So I don't know how all that's going to work, but like the primary core of the game looks to be like, a, you know, VR fishing, which in itself, I think a lot of people would be really excited about. It's just kind of funny, it's like tied into Final Fantasy XV. It still has all their like goofy dialogue going on behind it. It's like, good one, like great combo. I they didn't say that, but... um. Cool stuff. Moved on. Bravo Team, uh, a shooter, a VR shooter. It looks a little behind graphically. There would be moments where they zoom in on faces and stuff. They're holding guns, and I was like, oh, yeah, this looks great. And then they would kind of look at the whole whole thing at once. I'm like, that doesn't look as good as I thought. Um, neat. They didn't really show how people were moving from cover point to cover point. They just showed, like, every time it was like, you're cover, you're shooting, you're down. I'd be curious about the movement. That's always my biggest question. Uh, moving on. This cute cute little game uh a little tiny adorable mouse in like this beautiful wooded area with like a little babbling babbling stream and lilting music and little fireflies everywhere it just looked really cute um and then like it, you kind of lean back and you look down into the reflection in the water and you look like no face from spirits within if he was like super blue and kind of uh crazy uh, anyways i was immediately just like that's no face i really thought it was miyazaki for a second but uh unrelated i think then I thought it was maybe Redwall because the little mouse had like a shield and a sword and he was attacking this this snake and I swear that was a scene from Redwall. <laughs> I think one of the books that happened. Um, but it's called Moss, which again, there was like Moss Wall. There was a place that was called Moss something in Redwall. I wonder if this is related or they just like loved Redwall. Anyways, looks neat. I don't know how the VR is related. It looks like you're a third, third party. I don't know how you interact with the mouse, what the mouse does, um, if you control the mouse. Very cool stuff. Actually, it was pretty neat. I, I would totally buy it as long as I want to know what's going on with you in the VR. Then, um, that was it. I feel like there was another one, but I'm totally forgetting it. But anyways, they, they all look pretty cool. It actually got me a little excited for PSVR. I want to see more stuff like that. I want to see more cool new titles that uh, give me a reason to, to get invested in the, the platform. Um, then they kind of like sunk the audience they suddenly made everything seem like bloop, 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 like underwater and they had some blue lights to make you feel like you're underwater um and then there was like some rowing and i was like okay and they 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 zoom in that you're on the side you see this like rowboat and it looks like super high fidelity rowboat and i was like high def rowing awesome sounds good pan out kratos back kratos his head uh not a surprise i mean that was a big reveal last year so we were expecting to see a little bit more um looks awesome Tons of emotion between Kratos and this this kid, his son, in the trailer. Uh, that was my big thing last year, was I was worried that wasn't really going to be fleshed out. Very much reminds me of like uh, the Ellie and Joel interaction in The Last of Us. Of like, the kid's a little naive, very optimistic about life and everything. Obviously, we've got Kratos, who's like the exact opposite of what I just described. 
and they're going on some sort of like uh, you know warrior journey for some reason we don't really know there's something might be going on with the kid the the mom's in it briefly being like you've got to be there for your son it looks awesome the gameplay looks you know awesome cool god of war gameplay and i say that having not really played the god of war games too much i've always kind of appreciated them from afar i really think they're cool um it's just rare that i'm like i'd like to get into that just like constant fighting game uh, i learned that when i first played devil may cry i like bought it used years after it was popular and i beat the game being like what where was there was no story nothing happened nothing happened and i heard that that was just kind of the thing and god of war is very similar there's not too much story there's like a little bit kind of told throughout the thing but uh this looks very different this looks like it's very much about you know Kratos and his son and who knows what's going on there i'm, I'm pumped it looks awesome um a lot of badass combat and uh yeah at one point Kratos gets like messed up he gets totally nailed with this giant thing and like flies through a, off a cliff he's fine but like I, i'm excited to see like is he as strong as he always was is he a little weaker is he giving up some of that power i don't know kid uh, also apparently speaks parcel tongue <laughs> there's like a giant snake at the end huge huge snake even Kratos is like what the fuck's going on what is this and he's kind of just like <laughs> and the kid's like he wants to help i'm like really did did you <laughs> You, under, you understand that snake? So, uh, wondering if he's related to Harry Potter or, uh, I guess not. Anyways, moving on. Early 2018. So that's the first we've seen of that. I don't know if that means like June of 2018. <laughs> I would think early would be quarter one, but, uh, we'll see, I guess. We'll keep uh, an eye on that. So then we've got, uh, some singing androids with, uh, oh man, I forget who makes this, but it's Dr Detroit Become Human. Way more excited about it than I was last time, which is kind of like the the theme of this whole E3 was I'm more excited now about these games than I was the last time we saw them. So they show this whole like winter Christmas time, snow's coming down, but everybody's like at home enjoying their family time. And uh, these two androids or cyborgs or whatever you want to call them, AI, uh, I'm going to go with androids, anyways, are, are staging like a, a breakout of the stores that make these androids and they want to like wake everyone up and be like you're free and free them all and there's they go a little bit into all the choices you can make like at one point cops show up and the guy's just like book it we gotta go and they just kind of leave and then there's like another option where she's like no let's hide real quick and like if you chose that things play out very differently you can be a pacifist you can go after things violently and it totally plays out differently um not sure how different that ends up being, if that's all like kind of a, an illusion, a mirage of, of choice, but looks awesome so far. Visually very impressive, and uh, the gameplay seems pretty cool. I'm, I'm excited to see more about that. It looks very neat. So what else we got? Um, oh, so then they showed off, you know, a quick little trailer of Destiny 2. Uh, honestly, least exciting trailer I've seen so far, only because I guess it didn't really show off anything new other than um a close-up of what's his name bah, bah, gall gall who looks scary i guess um but we didn't really see that much else uh, bigger bigger fans of destiny might have glimmered more information from it but i uh, you know it looks cool september 6th uh some exclusive playstation content a new strike uh, ship, weapon, gear, PvP map for PlayStation. I don't know if that's timed exclusive content or whether it's uh, permanent. That, that'd be kind of messed up. I'm a PlayStation owner and that sounds messed up. <laughs> but um, I think it's coming way later, like October 24th. I, this is the date in my head for the PC, but I might be making that up. I know it is coming later. I, I don't know why I'm saying October 24th. Then Spider-Man. Close it out with Spider-Man. Uh, I was most excited to see Spider-Man because I love the Spider-Man games, but they haven't been good in a long time. I love Spider-Man. I want to play Spider-Man games. And I feel like I haven't played one that I've enjoyed in like 10, 10 12 years. So they open it up. Um, just really cool. I'm just kind of going to run down all this stuff. you got to watch the trailer. First, I just finished watching Daredevil Season 2. Uh, so Daredevil's, one of his big enemies is uh, Fisk. Uh, I forget his first name. <laughs> Can't remember his first name. Anyways, Fisk. And, like, uh, the first there's, like, a Fisk reference, like, on the side of a building. Oh, my God, a Fisk reference. Like, is that intentional? Or was I supposed to see that? And then, like, it's like, yeah, I'm moving in on Fisk's territory. And it's like, 
Oh, so yeah, that was directly referencing Fisk is in this game. So, um, things you can do. You're running around. There's different points. Like Spider-Man like sees different things, like a beam up there, uh, crate over there that he can like web to or interact with. And I, it looks like you can just kind of choose on the fly, like where you kind of like web around and do. Uh, it's very fluid. It looks really cool. Then he was like comboing against like these enemies, and doing cool combos with the webs, very Spider-Man E combos. Like he would punch somebody, do a bunch of stuff, and then like wrap them up in webs. And it was all dynamically happening, like it was being controlled. But it, it just felt like Spider-Man. Super awesome, but I was like, I don't know. Then at some point he was kind of detected. It was, I guess it, it, it felt sort of stealthy. He was kind of like stealthing around, like webbing people silently. And then this guy detected, and he got one of those like bolt time moments, like Metal Gear Solid Five, where you had like a reaction moment. And he, um, he like threw this device that I think we saw in the trailer for the new Spider-Man that like shot out a web and like sucked the dude over into the the wall and knocked him out. Just very fluid. A lot of stuff in the environments that can be messed with. He he did a web thing on like a hanging beam that spun around and hit a bunch of people. Uh, beat the crap out of this guy and like <laughs> got like knocked off a building ledge and he like did this web move to pull him back and slam him into the ground but like obviously also save his life. Very cool. So then, charging after this helicopter that he's chasing, finally got to see some web slinging through the city. To me, it looked good. Uh, every web was connecting to believable things. If you had a web over there, it would kind of, you know, you'd be leaning that way. You can't just, like, swing this way forever. Uh, as he would kind of hit walls, he'd start running naturally in the walls. At one time, he, like, kind of slid through a fire escape. He did all his flips and stuff through the fire escape. The web slinging looked cool. Uh... As he's doing it, there's little points just like when you're running around on foot that he can kind of like double web, pull himself through directly. Uh, I saw a couple people reacting to that kind of negatively. I think that looks super cool, but I don't know if that was done poorly in other games, so we'll see. Towards the end, started to see more quick time events in like some really badass scenes. Uh, they're at least the kind of quick time events that I don't hate, where it's like they show you the button and they're like, okay, time it for now. That's a little more interactive because like I gotta time it. It's not just like you're staring at the screen. And it's like oh god X. Like I hate that is stupid. And you remember that classic moment in one of the Spider-Man games where he's supposed to rescue the the woman and like the the floor is on fire. <laughs> if you miss the quick time event, he just like slams it to the ground. She's like we're all gonna die. <laughs> like explodes and you're like you lose. Um, so I, you know I'm not super thrilled to see quick time events, but they do seem to be handling it well. And there's some super awesome like moments that are handled check out the trailer i can't do it justice with my description of spider-man doing spider-man stuff but i'm pumped um it says 2018 so i guess sometime next year i would assume like holiday season next year but spider-man super excited and, and that was how they closed it out so it was about this moment that i realized that while i was super thrilled with everything that they showed i loved all of it uh there wasn't a ton of games like they, they hit us with AAA after AAA after AAA that all look amazing. Every one was really thrilling. Not too many of them were surprises. Uh, in fact, I think the only one that truly surprised me was uh, Final Fantasy XV Fishing. A, a lot of the VR games were, were unique and surprises that I hadn't heard of them. But um, Monster Hunter, which isn't unique to to PlayStation. I guess uh, what's it, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was probably also a reveal. I, I don't really get into those games that much. So that wasn't big for me, but that was probably a big reveal. Um, so overall, great presentation. And the way that they, they presented it with like how they interact with the, uh, the audience and the crazy stuff they were doing on stage that even wasn't like screen related, uh, I think it was very impressive. And I think overall they had one of the like cleanest performances. They also didn't really have anybody on stage. They had the, uh, oh, what's his name? Layton, Layton, damn it, can't remember, but uh, he was the only guy that came on to kind of like work through a couple portions of of the conference um, instead of having like, uh, what happened to players up on stage like playing games for like a couple minutes? I mean, I, I know they often had problems with that kind of approach, but I kind of miss it, but I mean still, the, the trailer after trailer after trailer was a good method, and I love that you could still hear, hear the audience. They did not blank out the audience. They had confidence in what they were showing, that people would be excited, and people were excited. But I think people wanted to see more, and they wanted to see more um, things that they hadn't seen before. 
So no Last of Us, which is a big letdown. Everyone was excited to see that. And uh, most of these games were revealed last year, and then we're now just seeing more of those games. Cool stuff, great presentation. But overall, I think a lot of people are going to say, like, I, where's the rest of it? Um, I enjoyed it a lot, but, like, you know, having time to sleep on it, I think it's going to be the big takeaway. Not a ton of unique, fresh games. Overall, awesome. Really excited for all the games they presented, and uh, I wanted to see more footage of the games they presented, so for me, it was a win. But if you were looking for new games that you hadn't heard of and you don't like PSVR, this was probably kind of lame for you. Uh, let me know in the comments if you checked it out, what you thought, what did the, which of these games you're most excited about. How pissed are you that, that we saw no <laughs> The Last of Us 2? Uh, I'm so upset. But still cool. Can't wait to play some Monster Hunter on a PC with some super intense graphics um, for like 10 minutes before I get super tired of fighting the same boss over and over again. I want to like Monster Hunter. I want to. And I'm hoping on a platform where I can constantly have a barrage of of cooperative players in an online environment that is flush with those. Um, I'll enjoy it a little bit more. Anyways, thanks for sticking around. Let me know what you thought. But yeah, like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you don't, but let me know what you want me to change. I've really been enjoying doing this E3 coverage this year. I always watch the conferences, but I never I never really do coverage like this. So I'm excited to check this, uh, do this new kind of format, but let me know what you, you like about it, what you don't, and what you want to see more of. Um, anyways, check back later for Nintendo. We got a Nintendo coming by. Uh... <laughs> Nintendo coming by my house. No, I watched the Nintendo conference and I want to go over that stuff too. Some really awesome reveals there, so look back for that video. Otherwise, I'll see you guys later. Peace. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, you should totally think about subscribing. I've got videos coming out twice a week, and if you like this one, there's at least a chance you'll like some of the others that are very similar to this, so live dangerously. Let me know what you guys thought about the video in the comments and other videos you'd like to see. And finally, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Hunting for Games to keep up with all the latest stuff. See ya.